Hey, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to talk about HPE ProLiant DL120 Gen 9. And we're going to do a general overview of the memory and CPUs inside. Let's get rolling. Hey, well, thanks for stopping by to learn a little bit more about the HPE ProLiant DL120 Gen 9 server. If you find anything in our video useful, do us a favor, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, well, let's get started with the uh, CPUs. There's two CPUs inside. It's an LGA11 or L LGA 2011-3 socket, which means you can use Intel Xeon E5 2600V3 or V4 series CPUs. People ask us all the time, which ones do we like? It depends on what you're going for. If you're using a low-end application, uh, you can get away with uh, something like an E5 2620V3 or E5 2630V3. And those are relatively cheap these days. We can get a pair of them for you know not too, too much. Um, if you're looking for a higher end application, I personally recommend the E5 2680V4. Uh, on a price per, uh, that's your best V4 in my opinion. Of course, you can get less expensive ones that are lower in, but this is just for a higher end type of stuff. That's what I would recommend. Okay. As far as the memory is concerned, it is DDR4 memory. There are eight DIMM slots inside. There's a number of different speeds you can use. You can use uh, 2133, you can use 2400, and technically you can use 2666. I will note, if you use 2666, it's going to clock back down to 2400. So, it, you know, as far as if, if you're going to go buy some, I would recommend buying the 2400 because it's probably going to be less expensive. If you just have stuff laying around and you want to throw it in, then yes, the 2666 will work. Okay. Uh, as far as the sizes you can use, you can go as low as a 4 gig, 8 gig, 16 gig, or all the way up to a 32 gig. No, unfortunately, 64 gigs just don't work with this machine, so the max that you can do would be 8 32 gigs. Okay. Uh, the type of um, uh, a memory you can use is two types. Uh, you can use ECC registered, also known as an RDIM, or you can use load reduced, known as an LRDIM. With ECC registered, uh, the max is actually the exact same as um, load reduced, is what we just said, 256 via 832 gigs uh, going at 2400 megahertz. And that'll be the uh, same for both of these. Okay. All right. Now that we know a little bit more about the uh, memory and CPUs inside, uh, why don't we open it up? I'll show you a little bit about the channels, how you physically install it. Uh, how you access everything. Uh, but before we do, I'm going to grab my ESD gear because you really never want to be inside a machine without some sort of protection. So I'm going to grab that and be right back. So let's go ahead and get inside. So first things first, just make sure the latch is set to unlock, pop it open, lift it up. Very simple, pretty much like any server you've ever been before. Um, as we discussed, um, uh, there's one CPU and that CPU controls eight DIMM slots. Um, uh, we, we didn't really touch too much on the uh, the hard drives, but uh, this specific model is a four bay large form factor, so you could put in four drives at the front. You have your back plane here, you have all your fans. There's two spaces if we wanted to install some more fans, and technically you could put another CPU in here, even though I've really never seen this model with that. Um, and you could technically put more uh, modules with that as well, but this is, this is what's most common, so that's pretty much what we tell most people, because this is how you uh, normally we'll see this machine as a whole. So, all right, now that we're in, um, I wanted to show you the memory channels. So, uh, as we discussed, there's eight DIMM slots. There are four memory channels, and there are two DIMMs per memory channel. You can tell the start of the channel because the start of the channel is each one of these white DIMM slots. Okay, so the white DIMM slots are the start of the channel. So, this is A, the very first channel. This is B, the second channel. Coming back to the outside, this is C and this is D. This is important to note, let's say you were only installing, let's say, four DIMMs. Uh, not every uh, server needs to have the most robust um, uh, max application, right? You might just be doing something low end and really you only need to put in four modules and that's that's uh, okay and we understand that. So the way to do it would be put them into A, B, C, and D. You'd leave all the black slots empty. People ask, well, why do you do this? Well, what you don't want to do is put them all over here and overload these two uh, channels and these two channels aren't doing any work at all. You want all your channels doing even work, uh, just have a, a nice uh, distribution of your load, uh, and it just maximizes performance. It's, it's the best way to do it. Uh, so it's a very simple thing, but it's uh, something that's important to do when you're installing your RAM. Okay. All right. Now the next thing I want to note. Um, actually, you know what? Before we install them, I like to pop open. This is a little tip that I always tell people. I like to pop open all my tabs make sure they're all open so I'm not fumbling around uh, or have a tab like this that's potentially fighting me when I'm trying to install it, right? Um, so I like to open all my tabs. Um, and then I like to note, if you look right here, there's a notch, also known as a key. Now this key is important because the key is not perfectly centered. So when you go to install this module, um, if you install it the, facing the wrong way, 
could potentially damage the lead and make the, mod the module no longer good, or you could potentially damage the dim slot, which would be much worse. Which would be much worse because then you could potentially damage the whole motherboard and have to replace the motherboard. And this isn't a, a situation you want to run into. So you just need to make sure you line it up properly. So in this case, it's actually like this. Okay. So this is going to be slot A, A1. Okay. And you'll notice when I put this in, you're going to hear these two clicks. All right, those two clicks let you know that the module is fully seated. This is a very common problem where you know you put a module like this, and you can see the tabs here versus the tabs here, right? The tab here, and if I put the black one, it might even help you tell a little more. The tabs here are fully inserted, but the, this white one right here is still sticking out. That means the module is not fully in, okay? So when you push down, you'll notice that the tabs will come in and you can also physically put them in like this with the back side, okay? Now, I'm gonna end up maxing this whole side out, so I'm gonna go ahead and actually open these blacks back up, and I'm going to install them here. Okay, and again, just click and click. You're gonna hear these clicks, and that means you're installing it properly, okay? Uh, and it's, again, I, you know, I, I stress the point, but it's a very common user error and it's something that we hear pretty much every week where someone thinks that they have a failed dim and they really don't what they've done is they have um, just not inserted one of their modules all the way we tell them to tell people to rotate them around and when you rotate them around you will notice um, that at some point you physically installed it and you know the problem goes away and so it's just a, like I said a very common error so all right well, let's get these last two and I mean honestly you can see this this is a such a quick process and it's really easy and it takes you know under a couple of minutes here and you can really just boost the overall performance of your machine and that's one of the things that we always tell people if you are looking to extend the life of your server and you know you're, you're using a, a, a G9 and you don't want to have to upgrade to you know a G10 or G11 just yet. You want to um, you know get get some more years out of this. And uh, the easiest thing to do, upgrade the RAM. That's the best thing you can do to boost the performance. That's what I always tell people. You know I, I'll check the CPUs and see what you're running, but you know CPUs are generally ahead of everything else and everything's lagging behind. So make sure you have good RAM in your machine. Okay. All right. Now the last uh, tip that I want to point out is I like to double check all my tabs, make sure nothing is jetting out, uh, because if it is, then hey, guess what? You didn't install it physically, or didn't install it properly. So, all right, they're all good. We have now officially maxed this machine out. I'm gonna go ahead and close the top. So we're just gonna line everything back up and put the latch back down. And it was literally, it was just that simple, nice and easy. All right, well, if you guys um, need any upgrades yourself, for your HP ProLiant DL120 Gen 9, uh, do us a favor, email us at sales at cloudengine.com, at sales at cloudengine.com. We got a ton of options for this. We, we, I mean, really everything, eight gig, 16 gig, 32 gig, you name it, different speeds, we're, you know, we got what you need. Um, and if you made it this far, click that like, smash that subscribe. Appreciate your time, take care.